troll and uh crystal maiden so it seems a little bit strange How you doing? but well, fleet with the tp right out into the mid lane instantly dropping the ward that's good stuff and then he'll place a second deep ward here in the jungle so these are always really nice This is why both teams always smoke out now, especially against the natures. If it doesn't look like he actually wants to, but if you had wanted to go ward mid, then obviously this nature placing his ward first would see where you put it. So if you're smoked as well, you'll place yours. Oh, actually someone else placed the mid ward for them, uh, for this. Oh, did I just have the wrong hero selected? I think I did. Okay, they placed their ward in smoke. They're fine. They they hid their ward as well. But that's the end point. <laughs> Yeah, I think well, I, I've been seeing this ward get placed way more often in the safe lane here, like just on the rune spawn. And mm -hmm. I, I haven't quite figured out exactly why, like if it's just for the level one fight potentially, or if this is so. like, yeah, it's like, I, I think these wards that were, are getting placed, like the one on the high ground here that the Nature's Prophet placed and then the one uh, by, the, by the rune, it's like, the only thing I can imagine is they place these hoping to get like a level one engagement and then have the vision for it. And then of course it definitely pays it for itself, but Battle begins. yeah, I think that is why teams have been placing it because the level one fights are just so common nowadays and you don't want to start off. <laughs> we watched one qualifier game where it was like five and four before the first minute uh, even started. And it was a complete snowball from there. Like, I think you just don't want to risk that. So either getting yourself a first blood or two or avoiding one, I think that's what these early game wards are for. Plus the fact that right now the side lanes are a little bit packed. When you want to block these camps, the sentries cover so much of where you might place an observer anyways, that it's very, it's very difficult to come up with like where you want to place an observer in the lane uh, yeah. without it accidentally getting dewarded. So I think that's why we also see a shift towards observers more in that like first rune fight that doesn't actually help with the lane but helps helps you with the game still yeah we've been seeing nature's prophet again and again well sorry i thought something happened then. again and again just like proved to be like one of the strongest heroes of the patch i i am like still so shocked that this hero has not received like an actual balance change in in months like they what they technically uh like, I don't even remember. Did they even do anything in this last patch to this hero? I don't think they did. I feel like he did, but I can't remember it either. So I guess, <laughs> I guess maybe they didn't. Yeah, I, the, the global rotation is just so strong. It's, it's yeah. very difficult to deal with. You also just like TP in and have 80 damage at level one as a ranged hero, which is like insane. Like, that just uh, is so rare to see. All right, they nerfed his agility gain and base mana regen in 7.35, which is a little annoying, but not that big of a deal. Not the mana regen. <laughs> well, it did go from 0.75 to zero. That's that's a lot more sizable than usual, but oh, okay. <laughs> that's still, actually... still, not, still not that big of an issue. Uh, here's the first rotation. This is gonna be first blood, baby. There's nowhere for Lelis to go. They hand that one on over to Double King, and that is a, you know, I, I said it at the beginning of the game. Trollwall are typically one of those heroes that can get off to a good start, and yeah, with the rotations of a Nature's Prophet pretty much always being present. And he hasn't had to burn TP either since he goes to the side lane, right? So he just portals back bottom, and he has spent a grand total of 125 mana. Top lane fly, gets skewered. Nice body box from dad next to the tower. Won't be able to hit these uh, tower shots though. And Yuma is completely free farming though. Fly has completely mm -hmm. zoned off dad and Yuma is doing very well. So even though you get troll first blood, it's not like the Meepo is not having a, a good time either. Yeah, Meepo has really high base armor. So Nature's Prophet, he does do some sprout damage but really a lot of his laning presence is just through right clicking and that's why the armor from meepo is very good and actually fly being this uh equally long range or just about equal uh that's also a bit annoying for natures because he just wants to poke away for free but when pugna can pretty much do the exact same thing you lose a little bit of strength there 
I didn't realize Pugna's attack range was 630. So what a weird attack range distance. Yeah, the, at the high end, some of them are just a little funny. There's uh, Ancient Apparitions, which is like five attack range longer than every other hero, right? Than the next highest, which is Techies, I think. I think so. It's very bizarre. Top lane, a little bit of fighting. Gunner managing to uh, find a kill there on the Crystal Maiden, though. So that's always really nice. He's actually doing great on XP, almost level four. Uh, obviously, a little bit of a side effect of your Batrider going down, but he's got a big wave here next to his tower. So he's actually doing quite well on this Abaddon. Yeah, once he has six, it's going to be pretty hard to kill him. I mean, obviously, but I feel like once he hits that fast six, he's going to be fine to be on his own. Uh, and well, actually, I don't know if you leave this lane because actually you just want Meepo to be free on his own. So I guess you bring everyone here and you play around Gunner. Yeah, you probably go for like, well, I mean, Storm Stormer. Yeah, probably would make his rotation top with like his first Rolling Thunder and maybe try and find something. Because you can pretty easily die at the tower with that. But mid lane, he's getting bullied. I mean, he's CSing really well, but he is just always low on regen, it feels like, in this lane. Tiny is just a lot of damage. Yeah, fortunately, Pugna will help him out with that as the game goes on. It's part of why people pick Pugna. That strong lane and then that mana battery later on. Going for this Magnus on the bottom lane. He has Skewer yeah. though, I think he'll be okay. Uh, the Blood Grenade, he's trying to just stay on top of him so he can't Skewer, and there it is, exactly as planned. Yuma gets brought underneath the tower. He needs one more attack, and it's gonna come from Fly instead. So they do manage to find the kill, as Yuma will salve up his clone. And in the river top side, they lose Lelis, okay. Ooh, nice snipe from Storm Stormer, looking to go for Flea, but will not have the damage. So it ends up being a two for one across the map. Who got the rune though? And did it get the uh, That wasn't even the rune yet. Oh, it's not even. <laughs> it's just, it was, was pre-rune like, was... pre fighting in preparation. Everyone's going to come back now, actually, though. They're going to like TP bottle fill. Yeah. I was like, you have to, right? Ooh, level mm -hmm. six on Storm Stormer. Rune's bottom, it's a haste. Fly just grabs it, and in comes the Pango, looking to get on top of the Tiny. No, he is literally five XP away from hitting his level six because of that. Will not have the bonus armor. Oh, that right, is you so that. unlucky. But yeah, absolutely take that. That is very good. You steal the rune away, you get the kill onto the tiny. Yeah, I would love to see, you mentioned earlier where Storm Stormer could go with the six. I mean, if you need to kill mid, then you do that. But uh, with that next rotation, I would love to see him go top because we identified this troll is a bit of, you know, the issue if he gets a good a uh, good game and get empowered, get enabled by his teammates, like that's scary. So I think slowing down his game would be great to roll up here, try to get a kill there. But also like, even if you kill Magnus, Meepo is free farming anyways right now. So it's not like Meepo becomes that much more powerful if you do gank bottom. Nice wisdom. Storm Stormer stole the rune. Oh my goodness. Dude, the heads up play is like, I kill mid and he just immediately starts walking to the wisdom rune and gets mm -hmm. there like at seven minutes on the dot. Like that is, that is such a yikes. Cause now you're uh, gonna start being that XP starved supports. And honestly, Nature's Prophet is one of those heroes who really excels playing from ahead. Not so much playing from behind because then you just feed every time you TP in. And bottom lane, looking to get on top of the Magnus again. The two roots coming through. He's got a skewer. We'll send him on over to the Crystal Maiden. But B9's like, maybe he doesn't want to be here. Rolling Thunder in from Storm Stormer. Still looking for Dad. Able to dodge the first stun, but the second one connects. Yuma trying. Oh, he actually poofs in place by mistake. Still pretty dang oh. fast, though, and he's out. Brings in a second Whoa, Meepo. One boot to travel first. Oh, wow. Do the turnaround here. Yuma trying to just chase down Flea will get him. Lund is now here on the Tiny. They need to be a little bit careful, though. Storm Stormer goes in, tries to find him, but Yuma is just... Dude, he's so fast with these boots of travel. He brings back his second Meepo. He just walks away with murder. Lund trying to punish him for this, but they can't. Saved by the Decrepify. And they just poke and prod, and they walk away, losing absolutely nothing. I hate to say this too early, but it is looking very scary. 
Yuma's having such a good start. A troll, troll is as well. I think it's really gonna come down to, in the next few minutes, are we going to see a Meepo kill or a troll kill? Because that will that will really affect their farming and their scaling. And if they successfully kill, like uh, Nouns kills troll or Green Esports kills Meepo, that is going to be huge for their respective games. Yeah, I'm looking at the support XP difference here, and this is like kind of a big deal. Lelis level six finds a kill onto a level three Nature's Prophet mid with just a lasso. And we already yeah. know like how bad this matchup is in general. Like Batrider has always been one of the better heroes at dealing with Nature's Prophet. And <clears throat> he's literally double your, almost more than double your XP now at this point as he's about to hit level seven. So, you're gonna have some serious yep. problems with the NP this game. Like you're you're not gonna have the impact that we're used to seeing. Yeah, that wisdom rune steal was massive. Without that wisdom rune steal, steal, then flea's probably level four. Uh, Bloody knight's probably level five. You know the pugna and the bat. You know take them down one level. Up top lane, you talked about it. We're, we're gonna see one fight or the other. As double king will be the one that goes down there. Looking for Yuma though. Yuma's and they alone. Do grab him on down. So that is something. RP is available. Flea just getting ran down by the Batrider. A great RP. Does catch the three of them, but Gunner instantly dispels it. Lund is here. Hits the avalanche. They have a toss, but they just don't have the damage. It's not enough. A lasso now comes back out. Lund can't get away as the, the damage from the Zabash is just too much. Gunner now on a killing spree. 3 0 and 1. B9, the only survivor of this fight. You get the Meepo. Yes, a valuable kill, but. It costs you way too much. Yeah, and unfortunately, Troll had already died. If Troll had killed Meepo first and then he died, he'd be a lot happier. Dying. No yeah, XP for true. him. Yeah, when they're already a bit XP starved this game. Yeah, I mean, your your cores are gonna have no money now. Like. You're playing against like a like with the really aggressive support that is Batrider. He it's similar to the Nature's Prophet effect, right? If this hero has a lot of levels, he is incredibly difficult to kill or to deal with because he will just solo kill people. Um, it's 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 exactly what happens when Nature's Prophet has a massive lead and bottom lane is King here again. They don't manage to get in range. He's just a little bit too fast. I really like that idea. They smoked up earlier. Troll had just recently died. So if you manage to kill him again, now he has no TP. That hurts the farm a lot. The second kill after the first kill, like it's a big difference killing back to back versus one kill, you know, another minute or two, then a second kill. So I really like that they tried that even though they didn't quite manage to find him. Well, they found him, but you know, he was too far back. But where's Gunner going? So he has... Is that the song? Okay, that's the Echo Saber. So yeah, Echo Saber into Yasha, eventually going for a Harpoon. They do manage to find a lot of damage onto the Pango bottom, but he gets away thanks to Fly, who was just hiding on the low ground. Decrap will buy him a little bit of time, going for the life drain now here onto Double King. They actually, just, they lack stuns. <laughs> it finally comes through. They do manage to finish the bottle, but my goodness, Fly just being a nuisance on this Pugna. Well, he doesn't have any points in power yet. I mean, that makes... We see this a little bit more from the, yeah, the off lanes, but Troll, I'm sure, he's like, hey, I didn't get the kill on power. He's like, I don't have it yet. I want it. I want it now. Get, get a point. Skip your last one. Yeah, I'm looking at the Troll in terms of, like, his progression right now, and... I mean, I mean, he's getting there. He's almost to his battle fury. He's about, what, 600 gold away. So it's not actually that slow of a battle fury. Like realistically, he'll have it pre 15 minutes with phase boots and a rate band. So, I mean, he can't be too upset, but then you just compare to the fact that all of the nouns cores are somehow above him. Like you have diffusal boots of travel and nearly a disperser done on the meepo like unironically disperser is like 500 gold away yeah and blink just finished up on bat rider as well who is higher net worth than the mid tiny so the that pressure is, is about to to ramp up you're gonna be terrified everywhere of this blink lasso initiate 
I like this Mage Slayer pickup by Stormstormer. Or he doesn't have it yet, but he's got it queued up. Because I think he identifies Meepo. Meepo will do it. I just need to make his game easier. So I've got the roll. I'll be burning mana. And I'll be applying that spell Radiant spell damage storm. debuff to make it harder to have the damage to kill the Meepo. And they're going to try to make a play here and steal another Wisdom Rune. This is brutal if this succeeds. Well, they do... They do know they're up there now as both teams smoke for this. You're going to a Pango going to have a great RP out from Dad to start the fight. The Avalanche follows the tosses there. They've lost the Batrider, but Stormstormer just still alive thanks to the saves from the Abad and the Rolling Thunder to clean up as Yuma. As they're on the backside, they buy back on the Crystal Maiden. It ends up being a two for three, but you lose the troll and the mag just for the support duo. At least it they just got feels their wisdom so room. rough. Did they get it? Oh, they did get yeah, the wisdom tiny, rune. Tiny right. grabbed it. I don't think you're happy with that overall. But yeah, no, not it, not at all. <laughs> you gotta you gotta find some small things. That's what he's saying to his team right now. He's like, guys, I got it. It was worth it. Don't worry. <laughs> you gotta keep that mental game up. I mean, an, an actual almost even gold exchange, which is kind of funny considering all of it, but. That's just because you are so far behind at this point. And like you said, Lelis has his Blink Dagger now, so... He's just going to be looking for pickoffs at uh, any time he sees them. Mm -hmm. He didn't even get to use it in that last fight, so he still has it. And I think they're looking... Uh, I think it was like on his courier. Oh, was it? He was still waiting for it, yeah. Because I was looking at his inventory, and I don't think he had it at the time. Dude, I love how they're positioned. I love where they're positioned right now. And Lelis, dude, he's he's gonna find Flea. He knows someone's up here farming. If he sees his empty, he's gonna block it. <laughs> Usually blocking camps is actually not that worth it right now because the map is so big and sentries are limited. But because they're so far ahead, oh, he found Flea. They're so far ahead that actually if you block one of their few remaining camps, it's even more painful. Find a return kill mid. Yeah, that's nice. The the blink skewer back and the blink dagger twice now done for tiny. Oh, see, actually, oh worth God, twice as actually much. Worth twice. Oh man, that's like a, a 260 gold kill for uh, the nature's profit and like 700 for fly. Yeah, that's that is a that's a rough state of affairs right there. Once you see that. With Disperser done, they're going to go ahead and take down this Roshan. Yuma queuing up, what, two Eye of Scotties, I think? No, he has Ags no and Scotty queued oh, up. Oh, Ags, right? yeah. Good. I was like, he has to go for an Ags, right? Yeah, we used to see Meepo sometimes double up on certain stat-efficient items, like, like Dragon Rats, Dragon for Lance, example. Yeah. But lately, it hasn't seemed... Like they do that anymore. It just seems like there's too many good items, like the Agonims, the Disperser, an item like Scotty. So instead of doubling up, it seems like they just go through. <laughs> they actually have a normal item build. Lund mid lane. He actually might live for the moment, but he's just getting constantly rooted up. He can't escape. Lelis will eventually burn him down with the help of Bango. Oh my goodness. What a sad existence. That just feels so bad. Yeah, Flea has started farming on the other half of the map, recognizing can't really do anything if we try to fight. So I just got, I, I've just got to find some farm and try to be stronger. Snipe this courier. Take away that glimmer cape from them. I think he's too afraid to show himself. So. You do have the Battle Fury on Troll, right? I mean, he's he is looking to get to that BKB here pretty quick. He is still severely under farmed compared to the cores on Mounds. As they now look for a tier three or a tier two tower here in the bottom lane. Should be pretty easy for Gunner to finish this one up. Pops the curse. He's got a Pugna there to help. So now uh, only a couple hundred gold away from a Manta. Yeah, Mounds is looking to wrap up these other towers as they finish some of these big items and uh there's three and a half minutes on aegis i don't know if they'll really try to go high ground with it i guess it depends if they win a big fight and they're able to go really quickly 
Uh, but for for Grin Esports, I know it's looking pretty bad right now. But Magnus is one of those heroes you always have to respect. The the high ground potential of a blink RP skewer back into you know the tier three, tier fours, uh, maybe even the fountain if you know you're going a little deep. Uh, that is always a way to throw a game, especially into an empowered troll who is just hitting on everyone who has been RP'd. So they're gonna still have to respect it. I say Yuma's just looking for a solo kill right now. Uh, he doesn't have to respect it out here. It's the high ground they have to respect. So yeah, we'll absolutely. definitely see them continue to play really aggressively outside of that high ground. Well, he has managed to find the crystal main. He's gonna pull over the main Meepo. She goes to the freezing field and the poofs should easily clean her up, and they do. Well, Lelis, he had his eyes set on the Magnus, won't be able to find him though. I love what Lelis has been doing. We've seen him cut back behind this tier two, tier three tower, looking into the jungle multiple times on his own, recognizing that even if I can't kill someone on my own, I'm going to scare them because they don't know if other people are coming. And he's just terrorizing them from this what's usually a relatively safe part to farm when you are behind that's yeah, pretty deep in your jungle well they force the troll warlord ult yuma pulls up the mega meepo and will just stand his ground here to find himself another kill he's just gonna do it well, you got one skewer back the avalanche will pop the borrowed time there from gunner but he's just gonna throw him in the magnus he's got no skewer to play with but they do have a lot of other damage pops the disperser a very balanced and, and fair item <laughs> and he's oh out. man meepo getting to the back of the h and i thought there was you know a toss at the skewer potential but no mana for toss and skewer was on cooldown which is you know, maybe why Yuma felt comfortable to go that far. Man, giving uh, a hero the ability to just buy Dark Seer's level 25 talent and make it offensive is crazy to me. And dispel, dude, I don't know. It's definitely over too. It will, <laughs> it's like, it's like it will so receive some nerfs. I don't know which part they want to nerf because I feel like before they changed the recipe and it was it was what was it it was a demon's edge right instead of eagle song yeah, it was it just still had the same ability yeah it had the same active at that point right uh, uh, it looks like yeah, suppress lasted one it. second less but the the core of that ability was the same but it was much less popular so I don't yeah. know if you want to take away that eagle song again or you want to keep the eagle song and then nerf the the active but some part of it like you said it just offers so many things in one single item and the build-up's not even bad yeah the build-up's great because then you just have a casual defusal to fight with but yeah being able to surge your entire team or allies for five seconds is uh pretty overwhelming to deal mm -hmm. with okay i have a complaint about meepo yeah, yeah yeah not that this here is super overpowered and all that stuff right Earthbind. The the net is way too small to reflect the actual radius of what you Oh have. yeah, absolutely. The visual size of it. Yeah. Yeah. Mega Meepo. You think you catch the catch the hero, bring him back? Nah. The main hero is back here. Mega Meepo everyone back. I love how janky Mega Meepo uh, looks to be honest. I think that is my favorite part about Mega Meepo. Is how, just how jank it is. Yeah, I love it. It's so funny. I love that they wobble too. They like wobble oh, yeah. as you walk. <laughs> Just sways around being like, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. You got four, four Meepos standing on top of each other. What would you nerf about Meepo? Is it the item build? I, I think it's honestly, it's just Disperser. Like there's, there, you know how like some patches are defined by items and some patches are defined by heroes? Mm -hmm. Which, uh, shout out to that Reddit post yesterday that just made a, a really bold comment that uh, items always defi or, uh, define the patch and heroes never define the patch. And it's like, come on, bro. Um, but certain items definitely define patches. Previously it was Bloodstone, right? I think this is one of the metas where 
like if you have a hero that doesn't really build disperser or like shiva's guard essentially mm -hmm. which i mean i'm saying that in a game that literally doesn't have a shiva's guard in it but uh it's like it we feels like hella disperser certain... builders though <laughs> yeah it's like there's just it's very difficult to play this uh patch without having these like types of items yeah, I agree. I'd, I'd throw Mage Slayer in there as well. Yeah, right. Mage These Slayer. just seem to be the items that, like, all the core heroes that are at the top of the meta, they either regularly build it or they they have the option to build it when it's really good. I think Mage Slayer actually, it probably. I think Mage Slayer and Shiva's Guard are probably the most defining items of the patch, to be honest. And then you just have this disperser item kind of like thrown on top as like sprinkles you know being like oh you know here's by the way there's this little guy but yeah mage slayer is just an obnoxious item like oh, this is good. you have a hero like that is viable specifically ember spirit in so many positions just because he's the best mage slayer builder in the game and you have mm -hmm. the ability to just be like oh your hero does 40 percent less damage good luck and you can't take fights like you actually can't take early game fights because he will get that uh mage slayer before anybody else then he hits like a four hero slide of fist in a fight and then you just lose the fight because you are just at a damage disadvantage now and it's like those early game uh fights end up snowballing out of control it's really it's really obnoxious yeah even if you have your own mage slayer builder like you said ember is the best at actually applying it so your mage slayer won't even be as good Poorly. This is honestly worth it though, to an extent. Like he's just farming up, drawing Storm Stormer back here. He got Mebo came, which is yeah, Mebo came, which is usually like, oh, the carry rotated here, but you know, for Mebo, it doesn't really matter. Especially with this boots of travel build, which I think is really cool. Yeah, he has bot Scotty and now a blink dagger. So yeah, he's all over the map. Like he, he can be pretty much anywhere he wants. He has but like 900 GPM at this mo at this point, maybe more at 25 minutes. What, like, like, I can actually what is the hot key? I don't know that one. You? 821 uh, eight, eight right now. 820. Jesus. Yeah, it's pretty good. Bottom lane. Lasso comes out onto the troll. They don't have a stun follow-up immediately, but he actually didn't have mana due to the disperser. And as a result, Adam's too good. 45 seconds. No troll warlord for your high ground. And he just got his BKB in his shard, too. That feels so bad. 29,000 gold advantage. They're going to realize Troll probably does not have a buyback now. They will go ahead and get the toss back, the skewer back. Gunner going for the dispel. They just say, screw it. We'll fight you next to your fountain. We do not care. B9 is going to go down. Flea has to be a little bit careful. The disperser just getting them all away as Gunner will just blink the safety. All right, so we ban the Meepo next game, right? Yeah, you ban the Meepo. <laughs> I think the thing so. is, I think they like they did have a bit of a plan around this. We have several Meepo counters, right? And they knew if we let Meepo through, they will first phase it. So I think they were trying to do what we had talked about in the draft, which is that, hey, I know what they're going to pick, so I'll plan around it. But I think Meepo is just so scary he's so hard to deal with correctly i'd rather they try that with a different hero like centaur dude like those kind of heroes that i do think nouns will pick up if you let them have it or chen right but i think they're way easier to deal with than amiibo yeah i agree i mean they just they won all three lanes essentially like bottom uh obviously meepo literally i think free farms for Almost nearly every way. Nice RP into the mid lane, into the Trolls Battle Trance, but an immediate lasso from Lelis. And there's the decrep as well. Oh my goodness. Double King. Unable to stick onto a target. I mean, you're just too far behind. Like we talked earlier, like, yes, if you get to a point where you have the Aghanim Scepter, you can play into these Pugnas as this Troll Warlord. It's totally fine, but 37,000 back at 27 minutes is insurmountable to say the least and that will be game number one going the way of now so the ggs get dropped and they dash the bounce just for some good fun sportsmanship